the logarithm that we study primarily in calculus is the natural log function. And the reason for that is the natural log function is the inverse of e to the x, which was the exponential function that we studied so often uh, because it occurs so often in nature and in financial math and in biology and physics and so on and so forth. So it only makes sense that the logarithm that complements that or is the inverse of that function would also be important. Uh, there are other logarithms out there. Uh, there's a lot of them, in fact. You can have a logarithm with just about any base, um, but we don't study those quite as much as we do for this guy, this natural log function. So this video is just going to look at some of the properties of the log function. Not a lot of calculus, no derivatives here in this video or anything like that. Just a, kind of an introduction to the natural log function. So uh, anyways, this is a logarithm. And if, if it's the uh, inverse of e to the x, then we actually write it differently than every other logarithm. Most other logarithm is written L-O-G, not L-N, but L-O-G with the required base down here in a subscript. But that's not what we do for the natural log function. Um, he gets his own reserved special notation simply because we use them so often. LN of X, which stands for the natural log of X. Um, his graph looks very standard. And we'll, we'll actually write down like his intercepts and that sort of stuff in just a little bit. But, um, but here's what his graph looks like. The Y axis is a vertical asymptote. So he's only defined for the X's past the Y axis. He's not actually defined back here. Okay. So let's, um, let's keep going here. Um, so we talked about earlier about the natural log being the inverse of E to the X. Let me show you how that, that math plays out. If you have y equals e to the x, and that's your exponential function, you remember what happens when you take the inverse of a function. Basically, in effect, the x and the y, they switch places. So a point, you know, 2, 7 will become a point 7, 2 on the inverse relationship. Just think about, like, square roots of uh, positive numbers. You know, if you take the square root of 25, you get 5. But compare that to 5 squared, which is 25. You know, it's this forwards-backwards relationship. So if what happens is the x and the y change places, well, let's just do that symbolically. We'll take y equals e to the x. And if we want the inverse, we'll write x equals e to the y. So this is the inverse relationship right here. And so if we could somehow solve for y, um, we would be done. This would be our... our um, inverse relationship. But the problem is, is there's nothing we can do to get y out of the exponent. You can't subtract it because it's not being added. You can't divide it because it's not being multiplied. You can't take a square root because that's not squared. And so, you know, people were stuck for some time wondering what to do about this. We know it has uh, an inverse because the exponential function is one to one, it's monotonic. And so any one to one function uh, has an inverse, but I, unfortunately I don't know what it is. So what we do is we wind up just basically agreeing just to, to leave it like that, um, but we're just gonna write it a different way. So we're gonna express this x equals e to the y, express it as y equals this natural log of x. So really, I mean, oftentimes we don't think about this. This logarithmic expression is simply some version of an exponential relationship, namely the inverse relationship for the exponential function y equals e to the x. So that's where he comes from. All right, now let's look at a few properties of him. Uh, most of these properties can be derived from the graph. So the domain and the range, all right, looking here, we see that we only have x's defined after the y-axis. So the domain will be all the x's that are strictly greater than zero. You're not even allowed to have the natural log of zero. Um, it doesn't actually touch that y-axis there. The range is going to be all real numbers. It's going to go from minus infinity to infinity. It's pretty clear that it goes down to negative infinity, but it actually goes up to positive infinity as well, even though it kind of flares out a, a little bit. The x-intercept, it does have an x-intercept right here. Um, that is the point 1 comma 0, and there's a reason for that. The reason the x-intercept is 1 comma 0 is because um, that's because the 
exponential function e to the x had a y-intercept of 0, 1, as you might remember. Um, now the y-intercept, there's not going to be one. As we said, it, didn't, it doesn't touch the y-axis, and there's a good reason for that. The exponential function e to the x never touched the x-axis, and so we would expect this to happen. Now, what should you be able to do algebra-wise to, to, for a calculus class? Now, I'm not talking about derivatives here or anything like that. Just, just algebra things that, uh, that you should be able to recall. Um, you should be able to evaluate any logarithmic expression, meaning plug a number into it. Um, there is a log, natural log button on your calculator. It's on the left-hand side of most calculators. And it's even actually paired up with e to the x. Usually e to the x is like the secondary feature of that button. You should be able to graph any natural log function um, with translations or reflections. So a translation would be if you added or subtracted a number to that function, you might move it up or down or left or right, depending on where you put it. And negatives will make this reflect either downwards over the x-axis or left-right over the y-axis. All right, lastly, we should be able to solve any equations that have exponentials or logs in them. Why? Because being inverses of each other, they will undo one another, similar to like a, uh, a square or a square root, or multiplication versus division, or addition versus subtraction. So in closing out this video, we'll, um, we'll just work one of these quick examples here. Um, let's say we wanted to solve this exponential equation. Well, I see the thing that's in, one of the things that's in the way of solving for x is that e. And so at some point, I'm going to need to apply a natural log because that will undo the e function. Uh, being that it's the inverse of e to the x. So we can't apply natural logs until the exponential functions by itself. So step one would be to subtract four from both sides. So we'd have e to the two x minus one equals 75. All right, and now this e is in the way. So I'm gonna take the natural log of the left side and the natural log of the right side. Now the natural log of e, anytime you see these guys paired side by side, it's almost like a square and a square root or a plus with a minus or a times with a divide. They will simply negate each other. They'll cancel each other. And you'll have 2x minus 1 equals the natural log of 75. Now, natural log of 75 is a decimal. We can figure out what that is uh, on our TI calculator. So here it comes as my calculator loads here. So we'll take the natural log of 75 and then that'll be some some decimal here and to that we're going to add one and divide by two we'll add one and divide by two so add one to that quantity and divide that quantity by two final answer 2.659 2.659 and that earlier decimal was 5.317 for the natural log of 75. Now, what is this? What is x equals 2.659? Well, that's the x value such that if you plugged it in here for x and you doubled it and subtracted 1 and raised e to that quantity and added 4, the quantity would be 79. So it's just the solution of the equation, but just along the way, uh, at some point you have to use logarithms to negate any exponentials. And if this equation had logarithms in it, we would need an exponential to negate the logarithm. So they complement one another in that way. So hopefully that uh, helps you understand just the basics of uh, logarithms here. Um, nothing too fancy. And like I said, we haven't done any calculus here, but um, hopefully we're a little bit better grounded in understanding the natural log function. And now we can move on to some calculus topics.